Hey, I'm Laura. Welcome back to the playlist, What You Learning. In this video, I am going to talk about when faith and feelings collide and really what in the world to do when you're not sure that you can trust God. I have some people in my life um, and have for a really long time that are difficult. They are hard for me to deal with people. Um, I'm, I'm not a super feeling type person. Um, I have feelings and God is, you know, God uses feelings and he's given them and they help us love him and stuff. But I'm more of a thinker than a feeler. And these people um, just wear on me. They are super, super dramatic and super quick to get angry, super impulsive. Um, and it's just really difficult for me uh, to, to deal with them sometimes. And I um, sometimes get to the, like, so discouraged at dealing with them every day that I just get to the end of myself and I just am like, I cannot deal with these people anymore. <laughs> and it's like, um, you know, sometimes it gets to the point and it has the, in the past few days where I just am angry and like, God, how could you allow these people in my life? Like, how could you allow this? And I just, I, I want comfort and ease by these people being changed. Like if they would just be different, then I could actually have peace in my life. And where really peace comes from the Holy Spirit and getting him on the throne. Um, and I can link a video below with that. Like it's not like circumstances bring peace. And so that's kind of, you know, the heart behind of my idolatry of like seeking peace and like ease and comfort above seeking God in wanting out of certain situations and wanting to not be around people that are hard for me to deal with. And um, then, you know, it's like um, God totally encouraged me in that, though, even in my anger of like, God, how could you? How could you do this to me and allow these this pain and for so long? Like, how could you allow this? And and that anger, like God was so generous in reminding me some specific things. Like one, he brought to my mind uh, Jonah and how Jonah was angry at God. And and yet God was there. He took his anger to God and, and God comforted him and God changed his perspective and helped him see correctly. And, and it, God wasn't angry that Jonah was upset and depressed and discouraged and angry and and same with Job, like when Job had to go through chronic pain of loss, loss of dreams, loss of his what he thought of the future, loss of health, loss of finances, loss of his children and relationships, loss of everything around him. You know, he, he was discouraged and was like, God, what in the world is going on? Like God didn't leave him. God came and reminded him of what was true about him in Job 38 and 39. And it was kind of like, where were you when I formed the foundations of the earth? You know, like, who the heck do you think you are? Like, remember how big I am is how God encouraged him. And um, so God encouraged me in those things. And then he reminded me um, of three very important things. Of One is uh, perseverance and character and hope come from suffering. That's actually what they come from. They don't come from like, comfort and ease and like everything just feeling nice they come from suffering so if I want to grow it's actually gonna be from suffering another thing that he reminded me is um that these people that he put in my life it's not so that these people will change even though he will do that it's for my own sanctification like my own becoming like Jesus more like that's why, like, he put these hard things in my life is so that I can change and grow and become more like Jesus. And then that leads into the third thing is don't call evil or bad what God calls good. You know, God put hard in my life relationships, friction, so that I will be grow. And, and he calls that good. So don't call bad what God is calling good. So those are the things that really encouraged me and reminded me to to call out to God and and go to him even in my frustration and discouragement and anger at him. Like God, I'm really upset right now. Like why would you do this to me? Why would you 
do that. And he comes and he comforts and he rescues because that's what he does. He is the rescuer and the comforter and the perspective giver and the sustainer. And his grace is sufficient when ours is not. In my weakness is when he is strong and he is good. Everything that comes from him, everything he allows, he will use all things for the good of those who love him and have been called according to good his good pleasure. So of course he's going to use this for the good. Of course he's going to get me through it, the hard relational aspects of life. And same with you. Like when you're facing hard, whether it be loss, um, whether it be friction in relationships, whether it be hard circumstances, whether it be, you know, difficulties, um, we're hard pressed on every side, but we're not um, shut down. We're not discouraged or um, like this uh destroyed we're not destroyed second corinthians says um he will come to us he will reveal himself in ways that we would never be able to understand otherwise like he allows hard so that we can know him more that he we can understand him more um it is in the fellowship of sufferings that we know him in a real way like i know you we did life together like you carried me through that you got me through that type of no, not just the intellectual, oh, I know all about God, but like the, I know you, like we did that together. Like I totally got to see you come through for me type of no. So that's what I've been learning. And it's not fun. I, I'd rather, I'd rather not experience hard times. I imagine the same is with you, but, but in the end, I think we look back and we'll say, oh, I'm so glad God allowed that, I'm, or I'm so glad God allowed that. Kind of like a, a coin, you know, when they make gold coins, they like have to set it on fire and then they scrape off the top layer of um, impurities to the point when then they can actually see their reflection in the gold. Um, so it actually is good in the end. Um, so basically for me, I just need to keep my eyes on God, keep going to him say with my feelings, just like David did in um, Psalm 13, you know, he's like, here's David, a God after, a man after God's own heart. He's like, how long will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Like, what the heck is going on? You know, he has this like anger and this discouragement. And how long will I store up anxious concerns within me, agony in my mind every day? How long will my enemies dominate me? Consider and answer, Lord my God. So in his discouragement, he even went to God with his anger and his frustrations and his discouragement and is like, where the heck are you, God? Why are you doing this? And then he says, but I have trusted in your unfailing love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. I will sing to the Lord because he has treated me generously. So we have to remember what God has done in the past, like how he has come through for us in the past. And he can't not be faithful. That's he will be faithful. He will come through for us over and over and over. So lift up our eyes and look to him uh, for he is our deliverer. So I hope this is encouraging for you. If you are going through hard friction, difficulties, um, just to go to him with your frustrations and let him encourage you and be your comforter. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. All right. Bye-bye.